And so I want to turn your attention real quickly to the book of Isaiah. I want to turn your attention to the book of Isaiah, uh, the sixth chapter. And it's going to be the book of Isaiah, the sixth chapter, and verse number one that we're going to uh, read. A very powerful statement uh, that was given by the prophet Isaiah. The book of Isaiah, the sixth chapter. Amen. Verse number one, when you have it, shout amen. 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 The book of Isaiah, the sixth chapter, verse number one, it says, In the year that King Isaiah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne. My Lord. High and lifted up. Uh huh. And his train filled the temple. And I'll read it again. In the year that King Uzziah died, I also saw the Lord. And he was sitting upon a throne. It was high and lifted up. Uh -huh. And his train filled the temple. Uh, the book of Ephesians, the fourth chapter. Uh, the book of Ephesians, the fourth chapter, and this is what I uh, dealt with briefly on Sunday, and uh, I didn't have an opportunity to go into a uh, full thought, but I'm going to go into it tonight, 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 in Ephesians, the fourth chapter, verse number eight, you have it, and it says, wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. And now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that does send it is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens. Amen. That he might fill all things. Amen. And so tonight I want to just talk real briefly about he led captivity yeah. captive. Captain. Thank you, Jesus. He led captivity captive. But the prophet Isaiah said something very profound. He said, in the year that King Isaiah died, I saw the Lord. Uh -huh. And the king begins to, uh, the prophet rather begins to talk about the death of a king, but then he talks about a vision of another king. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Amen. He talks about the death of King Uzziah, but then he sees the Lord. Mm. That's right. Vision. And when he sees the Lord, he sees him high and lifted up. And his train is filling the temple. It's kind of ironic that he's seeing a vision of the Lord in the midst of understanding a temporary death of a king. Yeah. And so when we begin to understand the importance of a king and the victory of a king when it comes to a nation, it is very powerful. Amen. Unlike today, we have a president who gets elected in and the president has to answer to so many people and, and when uh, he goes to war or he sends out other people. Right. Yeah. He doesn't literally yeah. get in combat and fight himself. Right, right. But in ancient Israel, the kings of the nation actually were right. men of war. That's right. Praise the name That's of Jesus. Right. They, led. they were men of war. They did not send men out to fight only, but they would put their war clothes on. They would get on the horse and they would go with uh, the footmen and the soldiers and they would go into uh, other territory and they would war against that particular nation. Yeah. And Brother Jeffrey, what would end up happening is, is that whenever a kingdom or a nation would rise up against another kingdom or another nation, it was for the purpose to overthrow them. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And so what would happen is, is that when the battle would get hot and the battle would get started good. Right. What ended up having to happen was the death of a king would have to take place yeah. Yeah. in order that you would be able to conquer the nation. Right. And so what would happen is, is that they would fight the battle and they would try to protect the king at all costs because the death of the king meant the nation has now become the prisoner of another 
salvation. It is in the book of Judges, the fifth chapter and the twelfth verse that I want to show you real quickly where this happens because the leading of captivity is not written first in the book of Ephesians. But we're going to see it written in the pages of the scriptures plenty of times, but I'm going to only use Judges, the fifth chapter. So Judges, the fifth chapter, and the twelfth verse, as we're getting it, I'm going to give you a backdrop of what took place. There was a prophetess by the name of Deborah, or Amen. Deborah. Uh -huh. and this prophetess had begun to rise in Israel as a mother. She began to be one who people could come to for instruction and for counsel. And so one day this man by the name of Barak comes to her and he comes to her to get advice concerning uh, the defeating of a king. Mm -hmm. And the prophetess rises up and she begins to prophesy to him to go out to battle against this uh, particular king. And what ends up happening is and so he asked the prophetess if she would go along with him. And when he asks her this, she replies to him and says, I I'll go with you. But, but, but the battle will be won in the hands of a woman. Yeah. Amen. And so many people thought that Deborah would be the woman in whom the battle would be won in the hands of. But in fact, as we trail the scriptures, we find that there was a young lady by the name of Jael who was in a tent. And this young lady saw a man come in. And this man was in the tent laying down and he was asleep. And the word of the Lord says that she took a, a, a nail in her hand with a hammer when she recognized that it was the king of the opposing nation. And she took the nail and she hammered it into the head of the king. So the battle was won by the hands of a woman. A woman that killed the king. Amen. That was the opposing king of the people of God. So after the victory in, in, in Judges, the fifth chapter, verse number 12, the word of the Lord says, Awake, awake, Deborah. Awake, awake, utter a song. Arise, Barak, and lead thy captive. Yeah. 
that he was the victorious one. The Bible says he showed the earth mm. he was a victorious one. That's right, that's right. Who said in the midst of Jesus dying, the midst of Jesus dying, the, the earth got dark. The darkness covered the earth and the, the earth began to quake. Then after Jesus got out of the grave, the bodies of the saints got up and walked into the Holy Spirit. And it appeared unto many of them. And they, they seen them walking around. What is the purpose of it all? The purpose of it all is to prove, Lord, I pray to you, Brother Darren, that he is the resurrection. If any man believe on me, he shall never die. Because if you're in Jesus, you have no choice but to live. Because Jesus is God. And there's nothing dead to God. Because no death can dwell in God. Lord, I praise you tonight. And so therefore he gives us a glimpse of who he is within his essence. He is life, but not only is he life, he is eternal. Verse number 
number. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Verse number. Verse number. Let's start at verse number three. And I'll run verse number nine. Yes, sir. But listen to this. Philippians, the second chapter, the third verse. Third verse. Let nothing be done through strife. Let nothing be done through strife. Or vain glory. Vain glory. Nothing. But in loneliness of mind. But loneliness of mind. Let each esteem other. Let, let each esteem others. Better than themselves. Better than themselves. Look not every man on his own thing. Don't look on your own stuff. Yes, sir. But every man. But every man. Yes, he will. He got a kingdom, but it's 
is the word. He is that word. Yes, sir. And took upon him the form of a servant. And took upon him the form of a servant. Yes, sir. It was made in the likeness of men. It was made in the likeness of men. Yes, sir. And being found in fashion as a man. And being found in fashion as a man. He humbled himself. He humbled himself. And became obedient unto death. And became obedient unto death. Even the death of the cross. Even the death of the cross. He humbled himself. Yes, sir. He subjected. The Bible said, no man can take my life. That's right. I lay it down. Jesus said, you chose us. Don't know who you're dealing with. You, you really don't know who I am, do you? You're looking at me like an ordinary man. You think that I'm just another prophet. Well, then it's a black man. You know me. Because Jesus asked people, who do you mean to say that I am? Jesus was. 
he might shed blood. Yes, so he got into something that could shed blood and took it to the cross in order to empty out the blood for the life of all flesh is in the blood. Amen. So when you give the life of the body and when you give the life of the flesh it got to be blood. Yes, sir. So Jesus gave a life for life. Gave up life to bring life. Amen. So he gave up the natural life, which was the blood. Uh -huh. yes. Let the body die. Yes, sir. Let it stay in the grave for three days. Yes, sir. And the three day resurrection is so strategic, uh -huh. so thought out, yes. and so planned out. And the reason why it's so thought out and so planned out was because when you go back to the raising of Lazarus from the dead, Amen. when Jesus finally goes to Lazarus after a few days yes, sir. of getting the word that Lazarus has died, uh -huh. the Bible said he gets there, and when he sees Martha, the sister of the one who has died, yes, Jesus begins to tell her, and those that are standing around, Get the stone out of the way. Yes, sir. Move the stone. Jesus, Jesus. What are you doing, Jesus? Jesus, Jesus. You didn't came too late because had you would have come before, my, my brother might not have died. But, but Jesus, you didn't came a day too late because it's the fourth day. I come from heaven. It's the fourth day. It's the fourth day. The fourth day. The fourth day. The fourth day. And the fourth day, Sister Carol, the body starts to kick. Yes. The fourth day, the fourth day, the body starts stinking. Yes. The fourth day, the fourth day, Lord, the body begins to turn green and fill up with gases because the body is trying to release everything that is still there. The fourth day, the fourth day, there's no hope of life coming back into it. When the fourth day comes,
Thank you, Jesus. Right before the fourth day. Before the kings. Before corruption. Uh -huh. He got him out of the grave. And the Bible said now that he liveth. He liveth and died. And now that he liveth. He liveth by the power. Jesus, let's pray. Come on. 